Good morning, pregame crew. This is Char Gallalori. You're at the pregame show. It is Monday, August 29, 2022, 822 a.m. Eastern, 622 a.m. Mountain Time. This is the pregame market prep show. What I do is I go over indices, commodities, crypto, movers and shakers of the day. And I start that around 630 down here in this far right corner in about eight minutes is where I'll get started with the actual agenda and the objectives of the day. Between now and then, I'm going to say hello to my friends. I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping and audio visual check, please. Maybe a few chart requests. Hi, Greg, Neil, Night Truck, Matthew, Andre, RJ, Matthew, Samwise, Casey, Mary, Carlos, Train Man Dan. Hey, ER, Anu. Thanks, Night Truck. You're, you're always first. Thank you. Hey, Roger, Whitney, Mal. Whitney, I hope you are well. Hey, Craig, Jim. Hey, Jonathan. Is it rainy over there? Hey, Eli, Joe, Fortune, Jessica, Topher. Yeah, you know it, you're a trader when you say, thank God it's Monday. Hey, Jessica, how's, how's my favorite place on earth? Thanks, ER. Thank you so much. We've got an exciting day, it looks like, with the Dow down almost 253 points. It was down almost 300 points earlier. We're getting a teeny tiny bounce right now. We're still feeling the hangover from Powell's comments and the fact that he mentioned pain and the market really took that to heart and it's inflicting pain on bulls. Okay, MCL ticker, MCL is in micro oil. I go over oil every time, so that'll be the same thing. Turn, let me go back up to the top. Game for Matthew. Uh, potential hourly bear flag, four hour, just oversold. Daily, not oversold. 28.34 is your next key support. If you're in short, I see no reason to stay to exit your short unless you're scaling out some profit, as long as these hourly EMAs are overhead. And bears are just waiting for bounces to short. Total domination by bears thank you oil's looking a little bit better actually who asked about mcl got yeah oil is looking better today going back down the list okay gurn gurn broke out of that tightening pattern last time i think it was you that asked about it Potential weekly bull flag on the table. 245 and 246. This is a daily EQ. We have a double top at 245, 246. A clear area for bears to continue to top fish until it stops working. Support 235 and 232. Nice barcode type action. And that's that squeeze. Oh, wrong color pin. Fix that. That barcode type action where we're squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. So that that part looks nice. Possibly bottom fish against 232, Friday's low. And that's this may be able to disconnect from the market. It's not heavily weighted in any sector, I would assume. So it could disconnect from the market and do its own thing with this weekly potential bull flag on the table. And maybe bottom fishing and putting yourself in a long but near support could work waiting for this daily EQ to break bull. I hope that makes sense. Let me draw that out. So you have a daily EQ. And so what you do is you wait for a pullback closer to support. Then you take your entry and you're looking at the larger time frame that has this potential bull flag on that higher time frame. So you go with the preceding trend. What trend preceded this current tightening range? And it was up. So when it's up or long, you position yourself long within that tightening range. You have a drought, aw, oh, sorry about that. Hey Basque, hey step two. I sometimes look at US tenure. When it's causing a headache, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. When it's causing pain for the market, noticeably, I add it to my analysis, but it hasn't really been, let's see, I'm looking at a triple top, triple top on the daily right now. It hasn't inflicted a ton of pain. Back here, I couldn't take my eyes off of it. 
I couldn't shut up about it. But once it started pulling back, which coincides when, when, when we got the bounce with the market, which makes sense, but it has been shooting up. So it's been going uh, step for step with the market. I'm trying to think. Potential daily bull flag, daily triple top. Looks pretty strong up here. Just getting an hourly pullback healthy as long as the EMAs are below it. Finally, Amira Asia. Bennett, we miss you. Finally. Camping, that sounds like so much fun. Missed you so much. N-E-M. You're welcome, Hunter. We'll get started in two minutes with the indices. NEM has been having a headache for a while now. It fell pretty hard on earnings. It is related to precious metals and gold chart is not looking too spunky either. If we go look at dollar, look at this uh, cup and handle on the daily that confirmed overnight. However, we are pulling back pretty hard here on the dollar. We just keep getting these tiny higher highs without a ton of follow through, kind of like Nat Gas did. Let me go back to NEM. That could help Newmont Mining bounce if gold can get a good bounce going. What you want to see is you want to see it get up and over 42.88, this daily double bottom, before regular trading hours open. So it's trying to do that right now with the gold bounce. Morning snow for my girl. Snow looks good. Okay, snow, let's see if, if it is heavily weighted in any ETF. I doubt it. I think it could be a money badger, Tammy. Let's see. It's not any real big ETF that we follow. So yeah, it could do its own thing and separate from the market on those great earnings. That daily candle is not a good look. It's not cute at all. I would give this a couple days for bulls to digest this movement and let the market possibly get a bounce going. More sideways action could be anticipated today. We're breaking below Friday's low. <coughs> Excuse me. If we get oversold, yeah. Maybe first 30 minute oversold, Tammy could be a good bottom fish looking for that daily higher low. But a safe, more conservative bull is going to wait for that first hourly oversold and then wait for a two minute trend change after the, the hourly oversold hits. All right, it's 8 30. Let's get started. Good morning. This is who I am, Chark Al Lori. You want to give me a follow on Twitter at CharkAlLori. I'd appreciate it. You can check us out, what we do at CharkGuys.com. I'm part of the Chark Guys, and what we do is we teach technical analysis. So every morning I step in here, we go over the Fab Four indices, and I have my notes on another screen. I use those to just kind of keep me organized. TCG members will get those notes when I'm done talking with the show. I'll copy and paste it in our chat room so y'all can slice and dice it. So I go over indices, commodities, crypto, and movers and shakers of the day. And my goal is to get you ready for the trading day. Do I have a crystal ball? No. Was I born on Halloween and am I a witch? Yes, but that doesn't give me any visionary powers on the market. Y'all saw how wrong I was with NVIDIA on Friday. I couldn't have been more wrong. NVIDIA just kind of slapped me around in the face. I didn't trade it, I didn't lose money on it, but. It had such a great bounce after earnings. I was anticipating it to hold the low from the prior day and it gave it up and then some. So how's that for some encouragement? You're tuning in, it's like, this lady's telling me how horrible she is. I'm not horrible. I'm actually, I'm pretty decent at technical analysis, but I do suffer from that human condition. And we're just going over probabilities. What's the more likely scenario? So with ES right now, we have a potential four hour bear flag. Hang Seng was down 0.73 overnight. What's DAX at now? They're down 1.11%. ES daily head and shoulders did confirm. We talked about that head and shoulders on Friday and it confirmed in a big way. So we're gonna talk about those targets. So cover your eyes. <laughs> White screen is gonna hurt, but I just, I think it, <laughs> this is from the swing report. I have to do charts in white in order for them to be able to print if they so desire. Yes, we have people still print. We have this daily head and shoulders over here in RSI, and it broke bare on August 18th. How cool is that? This was the heads up 
because we didn't break bear over here until Friday. It broke bear right here at this lower high, the head and shoulders, right here. That was a nice heads up of incoming, what's incoming. And we've talked about it before. It's a chicken and an egg conversation. Does price precede news or does news precede price? And in this case, I would say that the chart preceded the news. The chart, we had this topping pattern right here at the daily 200 MA and we were all watching it. We pulled back and then Powell makes his comments Friday that he sees no uh, slowing and raising the rates, no slowing in inflation. So they have to stay the course and keep raising rates. That's the only tool available to them. So with that being said, the measure, the measurement of the head and shoulders on price. So we talked about the head and shoulders on RSI. Now I'm talking about it up here in price We had left shoulder, head, right shoulder. We confirm to the downside, the height of the head from the left shoulder neckline to the top of the head is about 5.24%. If we break below 5.24% from the neckline break, the measured move, and that's just an estimate, the measured move is down at 38874. Now, if you've been around these parts, you know I've talked about this about 4,000 times. I can't shut up about it this dark pool level. We have $11.62 billion of notional value that went off at 38995. And I was telling y'all about this level before we even closed at 38995 here. I'm gonna have to change the pin color here. And then we were in, when were we? Let's see, one second. This is when we were in Asheville over here on this green candle on June 24th, and we closed at 390.09. And I was telling everybody 389.95, 389.95. I was tweeting it, and that continues to be a very key level. So we're at we're at the daily 50 MA right now on ES. These are the two key levels. I I would strongly suggest you keep on your chart the daily 50 MA and the dark pull level at 389.95. Okay, now let's switch back to ES. Let's go look at the daily. Let's get this Mishigas out the way. You see, we're sitting on that daily 50 MA. Let me get in there so you can see it. Do you see it? The yellow is the daily 50 MA. If you're interested in my chart setup, you can click on the link below in the video description to receive a PDF explanation as to what all these colors mean. And also we have a video on YouTube, how to set up your chart like Dan or Lori. So we're, we're sitting on that daily 50 MA. So y'all know what I'm gonna say. That, can, that typically offers strong support, strong support. So let's see if Powell's comments are going to induce even more fear selling and capitulation, which we saw, if you're in the chat room, you, you saw I posted it and I showed evidence. The dark pool blocks that started flowing in after Powell spoke, it told us we were going to have a trend day. How many of you saw my comments or saw anybody's comments or who cares who said it? Did you trade Friday bearishly and in a trend manner? Identifying trend days early on is the key to profitability because 70% of the time we're doing this sideways action 70% of the time. That's a hard environment to make money unless you're a premium seller, which I, is my favorite way to trade. So that's hard to make money. So on those other 30% of the time, oh crap, I got rid of my notes, but I have them on another screen. So 30% of the time, we're going to have a trend day, either bull or bear. And identifying those days early on are really important. And I call it reading a room, stepping in and being able to read the room. So the, the question is, will they be able to shake off the, the Powell comments and get a little bounce going today? I think it's highly possible that we do get a bounce, but I will be looking for overbought conditions to short. That is my name of the game. So we have a gap over here at 404275, and those typically act like magnets. We could go up and touch, let's go get very specific about it. We could hit 4087, 408725. <clears throat> that dark pool money, Paul, it was a lot of selling, it was a ton of selling coming in and the and all dark pool all transactions have a buy and a sell 
You can't have a seller unless you have a buyer. You can't have a, you know, it takes two to tango. But the question is, is it coming in on the ask or the bid? And so that tells you, is it more buying pressure or selling pressure? I could look at tick cumulative and know, I can know that it was selling, selling pressure because I, they were selling more on the down tick than they were buying on the up tick. And advancers and decliners were showing me they were throwing away the baby with the bathwater. I didn't have to guess. It was selling, period. So all those dark pool blocks that came in right after Powell spoke, and, and it came in right after he talked, and then they kept hitting it all day. It's like, well, now I want to throw away this. Okay, well, now I don't, I'm going to throw this away too. It was all day long. And we saw that obviously in the price action. You didn't need that data to know there was big institutional selling. You can look at the price, the uh, bear volume. Okay, back to the charts, 408725. That keeps a bear flag alive. I'm looking for a gap fill. I'm actually in long right now. I'm in a very tiny long looking for this gap fill. And then I will switch to short once we can get a five or 15 minute overbought. Five minutes approaching overbought. You see that? And as soon as we start approaching overbought, we get an upper wick of selling. So I'm looking for overbought conditions to short. Did I give you the key levels? No. Let me do that. Resistance 404. 075 support 401550 401550 bear flag on the table in queue <laughs> Lucia <laughs> Jorge you always got something to say my goodness All right Nasdaq is is losing the daily 200 MA but we have not closed below it yet we have until later in the day until this bar closes. So I'm not saying it's lost the daily 50 MA yet, but it sure is pretty close. Potential four hour bear flag. 127.1425 keeps a bear flag alive. 127.1425, getting a little bounce here. You see we're approaching five minute overbought and then bears are waiting. Is there a bear over here in these icons? And I know I can, Get it from the internet now. I should have done that. So, oh, my little doggy's barking. So let's just pretend like I can draw. Let's all pretend. These are all bears waiting up here. They are waiting for it. To, it's about to go down. They're doing Kevin Hart. It, it, they're going to just obliterate the bulls if they step up into this area because they have the upper hand because lower highs are anticipated on so many time frames so many time frames okay let, let me get rid of all that okay one two five three four is resistance support one two four three three one two four three three rty <laughs> Daniel, no, I was not up all night drinking whiskey and smoking camels. I have asthma, but thanks for the Lord have mercy. Resistance, 1889.30. Support is 1871.70. And we're pretty far above the daily 50 MA on RTY. So if you look at NASDAQ, we're losing it. ES, we're sitting on it. And YM, we're about to lose it. So RTY still remains slightly stronger than most. All right, YM, resistance 32144, support 31926. VIX, what did I say in my notes about VIX? Four hour overbought and a weekly downtrend. This is the second time it's happened. So that signal to short is not as strong the second time it appears. So we talked about this last week. You're in a weekly downtrend. We're expecting a weekly lower high. So typically four hour overbought is where you could go short and it would be a tailwind for the market if the VIX would pull back. Well, this is the second time it's happened. <laughs> MG, <laughs> you're so funny. So four hour overbought second time is not as strong of a signal. Hourly, plenty of room for higher low. I would love to see a gap fill. So see this pull back to 2590, fill that gap. And that way ES can get its bounce on with this four hour potential bear flag. 
get the bounce going, get overbought conditions so bears can have a more conservative area to enter. Bitcoin. I'm going to drink some water. God forbid I sound like I've been drinking whiskey. Bitcoin. Got an hourly higher high. We're running into the Great Wall of Louisiana. You have support at 19762 and 19737. I was looking earlier, we had these triple four hour inside bars. We're breaking bull, but we, we need to get over 2015867 to feel better that this 19513 low is in. I would say right now with this hourly higher high, it is most likely in. This is the low for now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Ethereum got a much bigger. I'm either being annoyed or entertained by chat today. Both y'all are providing both. Thank you. 1497 and 1495 double top right now. We had a double inside bar bull break on Ethereum, but we're unable to get through this 1497 for now. And your support of 1420 is most likely this low is in for now. On the four hour, the question is, can we make a four hour higher low? All right, gold. Gold getting its bounce on while, get your freak on, while dollar is taking a breather. Metal bulls really want to see this dollar be a topping pattern where it just keeps getting these tiny higher highs without a lot of follow through and reverse. That would be a bull tailwind for gold. Your support is 1731. Got lots of work to do over here. This is a nice little bounce, but lots of work and doesn't necessarily have room for an hourly high or low on a pullback at this point. Below 1731, your next support is 1709. We finally got that gap fill. Oil. Okay, so when oil broke over Friday's high overnight, it basically said, okay, your daily high or low is in. Do y'all remember last week I was drawing little love notes down here for oil saying I want a daily high or low? Well, I didn't get it overnight. I did not get that daily high or low, which is now most likely set at 91.08. We still have to come up and deal with the 200 MA and the 50 MA, but we had this falling, falling wedge over here that broke bull. Excuse the drawing. It broke bull and now we got the daily higher low. Now let's go see if we can get some strength in here. 9576 is your next resistance. This price action is super sloppy. So I am bullish oil, assuming this daily higher low is in, looking for that monthly higher low. But this hourly price action has me sitting on my hands. This is very messy. Higher high. Higher low, higher high, lower low, higher high. It's more mega phony or just phony. Nat gas, it's looking weak. Captain obvious here. So we have the pits. They open in 15 minutes. The commodities pit is in Chicago. They open up in 15 minutes. We got volume coming in ahead of that. You have support down at 905. So we got a bunch of bottoms in this area. Let's see if it can hold. There were some headlines. In that gas over here. What was the headline? European natural gas futures plunge 20%. So to me, that was a pretty big bearish headline. And that headline actually didn't cause an immediate drop. So it gave an opportunity for bears to enter or potentially enter nat gas bearish. Four hour lower low is likely set now and your resistance 9711. So this has a 12 hour head and shoulders that confirming now. We talked about this on Friday. It needs to get below 905, I would say, to confirm and it's not quite there yet, but it's still looking pretty bearish. Apple. So Apple. First four hour oversold. So we're not necessarily in a weekly uptrend. This is just a V-shape. But a weekly higher low, of course, is the more likely scenario, but we're not in a weekly uptrend. So we like to say, we look for four hour higher lows and weekly uptrends. 
when, excuse me, for four hour oversold, attempting to scout a weekly high or low. The problem with this sentence is we're not in a weekly uptrend on Apple. However, a higher low is the more likely scenario and four hour oversold may do the trick. We have not gotten four hour oversold in this entire run up. You see this? We haven't gotten it. We skirted it, skirt, skirt, but we did not get it. Potential hourly bear flag, as long as hourly EMAs are overhead, the bears are large and in charge, but I would love a flush down at open, like keep this low going and get it as beat up as possible here on the four hour and then look for a tiny five minute trend change during regular trading hours for a bottom fish setup. I just said an absolute mouthful. I know I talk fast and what I just said, that, that's a great setup for today. It doesn't mean it's gonna work, but it's a great setup. And if, and if you're part of TCG and you understand this terminology and how we look at price action, that could be a great setup for you today. Amazon, Amazon is not as oversold as Apple, but we're down here in this no man's land. This is scary. This is like ET, like, I don't know. This is scary stuff for me. When we enter gap fill territory, it's like, what do we do? 125.50 is your next support. And I say that in quotation marks. It's prior resistance. I guess 12899 is still on the table. Did we hit that this morning? We went below that. So no, that's off the table. So 12550 is your next support prior resistance. But when you enter these big gaps, it just, we lose, we lose support. That's the only word for it. Potential hourly bear flag, not as beat up as Apple four hour barely oversold. I don't have a good read on Amazon, honestly. And I told y'all that and disclosed that last week that I was not getting a good read on Amazon, but my setup Friday worked on Amazon. Well, let's give me one point for Friday. NVIDIA, NVIDIA, the, yeah, this is, I lose all points on this chart. We're not even four hour oversold yet. And we had a 9% day, down day Friday. So this was the earnings. They, they just made them suffer for earnings. And then we bounced, here was earnings here. We pulled back and then we bounced hard, recovered all of those losses. And then now we gave it all back and then some. So they are not happy with NVIDIA. And this daily head and shoulders has confirmed. We dropped below these levels. So 164.78 was that support and we lost it all. So I would look for overbought conditions on shorter term time frames to short NVIDIA. Tesla. <laughs> All right, so Tesla, we drew this on Friday, potential daily head and shoulders. And we're dropping below this area. Lots of headlines this morning about a ferry on fire over in Europe. I'm sorry for whomever that's Im impacting. They keep tagging Tesla with that headline. So I don't know if there's a Tesla car on that ferry that caused the fire. Either way, it's having a little bearish morning. It had the split last week and it's having a... I wish there was a word for like a hangover, a split hangover, a sp split over. No, that doesn't work. Potential hourly bear flag. I would look for short-term overbought conditions to short Tesla, Baba. -ba. Okay, I finally, finally found a name that's not oversold. So Baba is getting a little pick-me-up this morning from PDD's earnings. Pendudo, Pendudo is doing the, the dang thing. It is super bullish this morning, but I've got a high risk setup on it. So Baba, I would look to top fish this little high over here, 140 on a bounce. We are not overbought and lower highs are anticipated on the hourly, the four hour and the daily with this size of pullback. LUV, oh shoot, it's already dropping. Dang it, from when I drew this earlier. We had a potential short setup on a bounce and it could still work, but now we're hourly oversold. It wasn't oversold when I was looking at it a couple hours ago. I was looking to top fish LUV. Let me go see the airlines cutting schedules. This is what's in my notes. Airlines cutting schedules due to labor shortages, top fish setup. So any of the airlines, this one's not hourly oversold right now, so this one may work, AAL. I wouldn't short this one. But I would wait for bounces on the airlines, but I think you have a good short setup on the airlines on any bounce. 
oxy moron no oxy i'm looking for an hourly first oversold and you see i have my little orange triangle down there that is my alert setup looking for first hourly oversold and this big uptrend potential daily bull flag trying to nail that daily higher low this is buffett's darling therefore it's Lori's darling looking for first hourly oversold on oxy pdd Okay. Oh, Whitney, BA had bad news too. I didn't know that. Okay. This is going to be controversial. PDD had a run last week. They had positive news, so they did have a catalyst. Almost 50% from the low of Monday to this morning's high on earnings, positive earnings. But we have a triple top up here. Dang it, it's already pulled back a lot from that triple top. 67.45 and 67.20. So I'm looking for a top fish. We had this high over here, 66.67 and 68.71. As long as 68.71 is holding, I'm looking for a potential top fish and PDD after the 50% run from last Monday. All right, those are all my setups. Now let me see what y'all want to look at. XLE, sure. Omar? So with Oxy, the first hourly oversold, this same setup may work on XLE. The chart is, is not as strong as Oxy, but it's still a strong chart. So Omar, I would look for first hourly oversold. I would look for it. So I'm setting alert for myself. First hourly oversold on XLE for a long. And that's with my knowledge that oil has that daily higher low most likely set in a potential bull flag setup pattern so that has me more bullish on xle but xle it needs the market to be bullish and oil so it would really benefit if the market could get a bounce going otherwise it may be too big of a headwind for xle to get a bounce all right we got a daily trend change Eh, looks like we already had a daily uptrend. Weekly lower high anticipated compared to 259. Then your next resistance, 278. So a top fish setup is actually in play here. You're overbought on the four hour in a weekly downtrend. So overbought on the four hour in a weekly downtrend. I would look to top fish 259, but you want to see those bulls take a breather. And they're not taking a breather at the moment. One more. Jason, that's a million dollar question. If anyone tells you definitively they know what's going to happen with any, any stock, unfollow. Don't listen to them because nobody knows. But I would say they have plenty of room for a daily high or low. I like that IWM is one of the stronger indices. They held up very well Friday compared to market's weakness. So I would look for first hourly oversold on msos for a long but it has ev everything's there to support it staying in that uptrend bulls just got to do their job you're welcome joe so fi potential hourly bear flag and rsi is getting cooled off bears are going to be waiting right here around 623 is where i would look to top fish and that 632 is a tiny little resistance from friday these yeah potential bear flag on the hourly all right that's it for me thank you for tuning in sorry that i sounded like i was smoking camels all night <laughs> i love you all y'all you stop losses <laughs>